but I've brought with me a lot of material that I thought might, you might be interested to see. But I would like just to start off with giving you a little capsule background of the firm of Steinway & Sons, which does not start here in Astoria, but we'll get to Astoria very quickly. Uh, my great-grandfather, Henry Engelhardt Steinway, who is the gentleman with the fancy mustache in that newspaper clipping right over there, uh, came over to this country in 1850 with that whole wave of Germans that came over after the revolution of 1848 in north central Germany. He was a native of the Hartz Mountains in the Duchy of Brunswick. He was an old, old man. He was all of 53 when he came over here with a wife and seven children. Step down like that. And it's interesting, perhaps, to note that he sent one of his sons over here a year before to Havana and to New York. Now, why Havana, I cannot explain. But we have in the family archives some letters from Charles Steinway back to Papa in, in Zazen in Brunswick, in Germany, describing New York in 1849, which are perfectly fascinating. Because if you read them carefully, they could have been written the day before yesterday, <laughs> without, except for a few local references of the time. But describing this country, the opportunity to make a living over here, the freedom of action of thought over here, as opposed to central Germany in the mid-19th century. And the decision was, OK, pack up mom and pop and the kids and come on over. And they did. They came here on June 9th in 1850, landed at Ellis Island, went through the regular Ellis Island immigration procedure, and got as far as Hester Street, which is the street just north of Canal. And that's where they stopped. They lived at 199 Hester Street for three years. And uh, they were obviously immigrant peoples, didn't speak much English. They learned a little English. They learned about this piano building racket. And in 1853, there was a small depression going on in this country. And two of them lost their jobs. And the obvious decision was, look, if we're going to starve, we might as well starve together. So they started their own little business called Steinway and Sons. That was the old man and his three sons. We have the business records. Being methodical Germans, they kept beautiful records. <clears throat> it is interesting also to note that the earliest records are kept in the handwriting of the fourth son, who was a boy of 13 when he came over, and was obviously the first one to learn to read and write English, because they turned around and said, William, you make me the English, you keep the records, you know? And uh, well, they're all kept laboriously in his handwriting. He happened to be my grandfather. <laughs> and the business prospered, they worked hard, and very soon began to expand. And uh, they started in Walker Street. Walker Street is the street just south of Canal Street in Manhattan. They rented a couple of buildings. They lived upstairs, made the pianos downstairs. They made square pianos in those days, what is known in German as a Tafelklavier, and uh, a very old-fashioned type of piano today. But that was fashionable in the mid-19th century. And they worked hard, and they made a success. The family all worked there. And pretty soon, they decided they were doing so well, they're going to move way uptown. So they bought a piece of property, and they built a five-story factory building on the corner of Park Avenue and 53rd Street. And boy, what a hot piece of real estate. It, if you know Manhattan, it's where the Seagram's building is today, <clears throat> which we still owned it. They sold it in 1906 for $450,000. And they thought they were doing very well. Actually, I think it's worth $450,000 a front inch today. However. They moved then to Astoria, Long Island. Well, no, actually, they moved in 1871. They finally moved the whole operation out here in 1906. That was the Dittmars factory. But the Riker factory, or the 19th Avenue factory, where we are today, was an original purchase of seven farms in 1871. Seven farms and an estate. And the estate is the old mansion. The old mansion which still stands, and I'm sure all of you are familiar with it, was built by Benjamin F. Pike. Benjamin F. Pike was the great eyeglasses expert in the city of New York. And he made a great deal of money making eyeglasses, and he built this mansion. 
in right in the middle of the Civil War, by the way, 1863 or 4. I'm not sure of the precise date that that building was built, and I've never been able to trace the record. But he died, unfortunately, two or three years later, and his widow and family sold the estate in 1871 to the Steinway family, to my grandfather and his brothers, plus the seven farms. The seven farms constituted 440 acres, all told, and it's pretty much the land between Bowery Bay and the present Grand Central Parkway, north of Grand Central Parkway, which was then Flushing Avenue, of course. Not quite all, but there's a jagged, I've got a map of it, which you can see uh, a little later.